The assessment system we've been working with, I think, is a significant departure from traditional assessment because it takes a sample of behavior in one minute, a one minute sample of a child's reading behavior. It's fluency based and it's predictive of the future. So if you think about it, what I'm asserting is that in one minute, in a one minute sample, you can get a rep sufficient representation of a child's ability to negotiate the alphabetic writing system. And that uh, sample is predictive of how that child's gonna be down the road. So if I take a sample of a child's behavior at the end of kindergarten, it's predictive of how that child will do at the end of third grade. Now that to me is an assessment system that uh, is powerful, is, uh, is necessary, and, and uh, also is one that we can get to scale. And that's what we're using right now. Because right now there's such a coarse correspondence between the gross level of problems that these kids may be having and their later That's right. I could see how a one minute sample could lead to that. The question is, how finely are you understanding the specific kind of variation of performance that's going on inside the processing of that individual child so uh -huh. that it actually informs the instruction uh -huh. in a way that meets them exactly. in the flow of their needs exactly. better? Yeah. How does that one minute connect yeah. to that? Well, it depends on what you sample. Because what you sample is going to be critical to the kind of adjustment you make in instruction. So in the research on beginning reading, we generally target five different pieces. Phonological awareness, where basically it deals with the sound system independent of any text. And the idea is that uh, the sound system is predictive of how we read in text. So, I mean, that's a peculiar thing in itself. That Well, if we take the model like you started with, uh -huh. that reading is really the player piano of a virtually playing the audio sound system that uh -huh. we start with. That's right, right. that's right. Th then um, how well that, that oral language system is functioning is, is the undercarriage. That's that right. Has to function. That's so right. If you go and assess that, there's something wrong with it. Obviously, nothing else is going to work. That's happen. right. If that's not working. That's well. right, that's right. But most people have would find that peculiar that... Um, that you're using an uh, auditory signal system predict that that you grab, you sample in the absence of print to predict print. It's counterintuitive. How can I use sound? Well, we got to make that intuitive because that's really clear. Uh, right. that, ab <laughs> absolutely, but that's teachers. A that's a that's a failure to understand what reading is at a basic level. That's goal. right, absolutely. And lots of believe it or not, lots of practitioners have that uh, difficult time understanding how. Which comes back to horse man again. Be, that's right, exactly. <laughs> Which comes back to horse horse man and so on. Exactly. So we we assess phonological awareness. We assess we assess critical parts of phonological awareness that are that are predictive of word reading. So for example, for example, segmenting a word like mud. Tell me the first sound in mud. Mm. That task is more predictive of word reading than rhyming. So our one minute assessment, which by the way is called the Dynamic Indicators of Basic Early Literacy Skills (Dibbles). And it's created by a colleague here at the University of Oregon, two colleagues, are Roland Good, Drs. Roland Good and Ruth Kaminsky. And it's now used in almost every state, which is part of the Reading First initiative. So we sample phonological awareness, we sample word reading, pseudo word reading. And again, the idea is that if kids can manipulate and map the sounds to print in words that don't make sense, you get a pretty good indicator of their ability to map sound to print. You're peering in on the You're, implicate processing. That's right. We're peering in on their ability to take sound and map it to print in words that uh, they don't see every day, pseudo words, nonsense words. Yet that sample, one minute sample, is predictive of their ability to read words in real print. Uh, con uh, conventional words and so on. So you're concerned with whether or not, even though they don't know the word or the word doesn't exist, can they pronounce? The can word they pronounce according to the instructions implicit in the code? Because Absolutely. the phonological system is working and they're able to map it to the code. That you got it. Absolutely. They've got the sound sound signal intact. They've got the ability to take the sound system and map it to the print. And then the third piece we rely on is oral reading fluency. And this is a measure of uh, a child reading a passage that he or she has not read before, a novel passage at grade level, reading it for one minute, and we count the number of words they read correctly. We don't ask any comprehension questions. 
Yet that indicator of words, correct words read per minute is highly predictive of children's comprehension ability. So again, these are constructs that the practitioner in the classroom is only beginning to embrace. And these are constructs that are critical to the, the composite of reading. We can sample these behaviors in one minute, and these samples, one minute samples, are very predictive of highly critical reading uh, skills down the road. So to me, that's a heck of a deal to be able to sample something in a minute Enter it into a database system, get reports back in 32 seconds. You can get class reports, school level reports, district level reports, so that teachers can take these reports and use them because the reports also make instructional recommendations based on the performance on the actual score and the risk category. So, so they're, they're diagnostic and prescriptive. They're by diagnostic and prescriptive, exactly. They tell you based on the score what the risk category is, if the child is at low risk or at some risk or, at, or is in fact at uh, high risk. And if the child's at low risk, that means that child has an 80% chance of, the child's already at benchmark, that child can go on and do other things if that child's at risk, that means the child has, unless the school intervenes on those particular constructs, phonological awareness, vocabulary, reading comprehension, fluency, uh, alphabetic principle, uh, that the odds of that child being successful down the road are not in his or her favor. So we can get this system, and we have over a million kids in that Dibbles database right now that allows us to harvest these data, look at the schools that are doing well, and make predictions about how they're gonna do in the future. So that's two major pieces of understanding this complex host environment known as schools. Do we have the right curriculum in place? Do, are we using and employing curricula that we know are effective, that are based, that is based on the best science? Do we have three tiers of uh, tools that we can use, core curriculum? Do we have supplemental curriculum? Do we have intervention? Which are just gross um, Absolutely. That's right. For management purposes. Absolutely. Oh, want a fluid That's right. Seamless really system. Right. Exactly. Because you've got individual variation across the range. And we're using, again, all of this is a conceit. We're using different pieces to get at, because we're not going to be able to have one-on-one -on -one for every child. So we use a core curriculum to teach most of the kids. One on 20, one on 25. We use a supplemental curriculum to supplement that core curriculum. And then we use an intervention curriculum to do one to one or one to three or one to eight. I mean, again, because of the resources that uh, we have available, we have to be smart about how to use those resources in a way that allows us to acknowledge the differentiation and acknowledge the, the differences in terms of risk, but at the same time try to have an impact. So that's the curriculum piece. The other piece is getting a progress monitoring system in place that allows us to, to measure growth and assess growth every week, if, every week if we have to, so that we can determine whether or not the instruction that's going on is making a difference. So you need an assessment system that's sensitive to change, sensitive to growth. So and the so basic uh, Dibble mechanism can slide across the scale and pick up the same implicate readings no matter where they are, at what content level, to be able to, to feed back into this assessment that prescribes the that's right. pieces you're describing. That's right. You, you hit a ceiling because once you get the, I mean, we have basically a handful of measures. We can tap the logical awareness in a minute, in lots of different ways. We can tap um, the phonics piece, the alphabetic principle, through pseudo word reading or even word identification reading in one minute. Uh, that, last, mm -hmm. that last point would imply that you've uh, picked out what you think are the most problematic That's right. to, to focus on. That's you're right. You're not going to hit the spectrum. You're not going to hit all of it. That's right. So, I mean, so, so you've got a top five list. That's right. Where are the greatest uh, yeah. letter sound correspondence confusions? that they're tripping on and you're actually intentionally constructing their one minute experiences to reveal how they're dealing with the most difficult challenges. Exactly. No, you've, you've captured. I gotta take you to task on the alphabetic insight. Sure. <laughs> um, people use that a lot. Uh -huh. Reed Lyon uses that. And mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of suggestive of a singular event, you know, of a, a principle, meaning something that's relatively stable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Once you get it, it's there. Mm -hmm. Or an insight, which is a singular event. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. But um, the correspondence between the alphabet and the sound system is anything but a single principle that's right. that's or right. a single yeah. insight. Yeah. 
That's fair enough. That's fair enough. 